In the previous video, I organized this, the air for the air knife on my camera, which is typically inside this enclosure. But I need to do something over here with these uh, because I'd really like to hook these over there uh, and so they're easier to get to. This is the bracket that came with the machine and I'm able to put this in there, but it's not really, there's not really a good way to hold all of the things that I would like to have in there. So that's what I'm going to focus on this time, creating a new bracket that will give me better organization. I'd like to start by talking about the design goals and what I want to therefore achieve with this. As you can see right now, I have my dead blow hammer here, but I'd like to also be able to have a place to put my washdown nozzle as well as the air nozzle. And the final thing I would like to be able to put in here is the uh, speed wrench that I use for my vice. Uh, this kind of fits, but it falls out easily as you can see. So I want to have something that's more purpose-built. When I do this type of project, typically the first thing that I do is I come up with a design and then I do some uh, 3D printing. So I'm going to take this bracket off and then I'm going to show you some of the tests that I did. So this uh, bracket was held on by two of these uh, screws. And uh, it's, you can see it's, it's pretty thick. I measured this and uh, I'm going to use this to basically design a part that has roughly the same thickness of material. Uh, you can see this is a fairly simple design. Uh, the one thing that's interesting here is that they, oops, you can't see. The one thing that's interesting here is that there's a, a lip, as you can see there. So I thought I would try to reproduce that. This is the first version of the bracket that I created, and my thinking was that I would have this go across and come down and forward to make a shelf, and that I could make it wider and, and basically put other things in here, because there's actually a third screw over here on the right side. I changed my mind about that because uh, getting the, the various things in here, I mean, this would be fine, but uh, it was also getting close to the, the bottom of here when I had enough clearance. And so I decided to go back to the original design that Haas had. That was the next version that I printed, again out of PLA. <clears throat> and by the way, I printed it with this orientation so that the filament would be extruded along this path, which would give it the most strength in this direction. But it's, of course, not strong enough to really be used. Uh, it is good enough for testing. And so the first thing that I discovered is that this doesn't work. I need the air hose to be to the left so that it'll sit over there. So I went back to the computer and uh, designed a new version. This is the next version I printed and it's definitely an improvement. There, the um, wash on hose fits there. The air hose or the air gun fits there. My speed wrench fits there. So far so good. The dead blow hammer fits there, but this is where I ran into an issue, which is it hits the doors. So I realized that I needed to swap these two to put the dead blow hammer here and then the speed wrench there. So here's the version where I swapped these two positions. And as you can see, this still works nicely. And those works nicely. I'm gonna take those, no, I'm gonna keep that one on. Um, but I don't want to put too much weight on it because it'll start to sag, but this is nice and the drawer is clear, so that's a good thing. And then my speed wrench fits nicely into there. So this looks pretty good. Let's uh, head back to the computer and submit this to Send, Cut, Send and see what happens. So I'm not going to go into all the depth of how to design sheet metal parts in Fusion 360 but I will give you some idea of where to start. So the first thing is you need to switch to the sheet metal tab, and then you want to go to sheet metal rules. Now you can see I don't have any currently in the design. I want to make this out of steel, so I'm going to define a new rule that's going to be in my project. So this requires some information. I happen to know that the material that I'm using is Let's see, there we go. For some reason it's 
doing something odd with the editing. So I'll say it's 0.135 inches. And then there are a couple of other, other pieces of information that I need, which is for the, uh, the K factor, I need to make sure that's correct, and then I need to set the bend radius. To get those, I'll switch over to here. To find more about the materials, like the K-factor, etc., I click on the Material Selection Guide, and then I want to go down to where I find Mild Steel, which is right here. And if I scroll down, this is uh, the Mild Steel I want to use because it goes up to 0.135 inches. The others do not, so I'll click on that one. And then if I scroll down a little bit farther, and then click on 0.135. Down here, you'll see that there's a K factor under bends. So the K factor is 0 0.032. So I'll go over to back to Fusion 360 and set this K factor to 0 0.032. And then if I go back to here, I also want to get the bend radius. There it is, effective bend radius is 0.1. So I'll go in here and set the bend radius to 0 0.1, and then save those. So I'll go back to Fusion 360, and I now have that particular one in here. Um, I realized I need to change this to inches. So when I create a sketch, and I'm just going to create a, a quick sketch, and then we'll switch to the actual part, and I'll show you how that works. So I'm just going to create something of arbitrary size. And then when I click on the base flange here, I can select this, and then I need to select the material, which is this one here. Now it doesn't have a very good name, so I'm going to go back into here and modify this name. So I'll call it Mild Steel 0.135. Okay, so again, we go back to the base flange, click on this, and then we select Mild Steel 0.135. And that means we can now do things such as just click here and then drag up to create the 90 degree bend. So that's a quick introduction. Now I'll switch to the actual part. Uh, here I have the same base flange and I've cut it out with the two mounting holes. And then we have the various bends and I'll step them through one at a time. So this is going, this is basically the bottom of the controller. This is going down. Then we come out where we will have the holes for the mounting. We extend it out to the right. And then here is where we cut the holes. There's actually a little bit more going on that I'll come back to in a little bit, but let me first save this out and import it into Send Cut Send because I want to show you something about this right here. I exported that file as a step file so I can open that and add it to Send Cut Send. It's going to take a little bit of time to process it and then once it processes it, then I can start to choose the different things, uh, you know, the type of material, the process, etc. So I chose laser cut. I want to use uh, steel. I'm going to use mild steel, 0.135 thick. Click on next. That looks good. And here's what I wanted to show you, which is this message here about how you need a relief. And I didn't really understand why I needed a relief, but if you click on Learn More, that takes you to this right here. And again, um, there's not really that much information here. If I click here, on the other hand, now what this section here is talking about is how you're getting going to get deformation. This is similar to what I have. It's not exactly the same, but you can see there's some distortion there. So rather than going through this page in detail, I'm going to show you the actual part and some distortion we get. Before we do that, let me just show you the change that I made. So I'm going to unsuppress this feature here. 
And you can see that what I did is I cut this back a little bit so that this area here, this distortion, won't interact with this section here. And this version is uh, the version that I sent to Send, Cut, Send and had them cut, bend, and powder coat. Here's the part taken out of the box, and so I just need to cut the uh, shrink wrap that they put around it. This is where I had to have the bracket be cut back a little bit, uh, and this is the reason why, because it uh, pushed out the material here. And so I needed this to be far enough back so it would be away from this part where it was uh, pushed out. And here it is in place. Now, if you were curious, the gray is a little bit different. So the old one is a little bit darker than the new one, but if you don't have them up side by side, you'd probably never really notice. I'm pretty happy with this. You can see that I have a place for my speed wrench, my dead blow hammer, washdown, and air hose. Actually, I think I want to change the order because the Hoses were crossing, but there we are. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I just have to see how it holds up to use, but I think it's going to hold up pretty well. And if it doesn't, I can always make a new one. It's pretty simple now that I know the process. Now I'm curious to hear from you what you think you would do. Do you like this arrangement? Do you have other ideas on what a bracket should look like? Please comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.